Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, back again with another tool review video for you. For those of you that have ever flared a brake line, a fuel line, or something like that, or had needed to, need to do it, uh, you probably used a tool similar to what I have here. And this is, uh, well, let's just say a rather inexpensive version of this tool, but many of the tools that I've seen of this type are very similar. And they work okay. I'm gonna say that they're probably, yeah, 80% effective, maybe even 70% effective. It does work, but it just doesn't work that great. So I'm not even gonna bother showing you how this whole thing works. But if you have one of these, you're gonna to wanna to throw it away and get one of these. This is the brake flare kit from Eastwood. And unboxing is simple. You simply open the box. It comes with a set of instructions and this guy here, which is the business end of the tool itself. Uh, this, this is life altering, in my opinion. Uh, it comes with that. It comes with uh, the handle that basically slips in to, to work the tool. It also comes with a set of dies uh, for different types of work that you might have. It comes with uh, 3 16 quarter inch, 5 16 and 3 8 sizes of dies in this, which are the most common sizes that you'll run into. Now you will note that this particular tool is set up for 45 degree flares. Most of the flaring that you'll do out there is 45 degrees. However, uh, 37 degree flares have been something that have shown up, uh, particularly with uh, builders, I'm told. People who build hot rods, that kind of thing, are into the 37 degree flares. There is another one of these, uh, I'll call it a die. Uh, another one of these dies that, that suits or, or makes 37 degree flares as well. So this tool can work both ways. You just need to order another one of these dies. I'll put a link in the description uh, to that along with everything mentioned here today so you can uh, go and explore these things for yourself. Also uh, down there will be the price for the tool. Uh, I do that because prices sometimes change and it's easier to change a price in a description than it is in a video. Anyway, rather than taking up any more of your time talking about this tool, let's head over to the bench and actually see it in action because I got to tell you, it's a lot of fun. I'm excited. You excited? You should be excited. If you're not, get excited! I'll see you over there. Okay, we're going to remove the uh, head from the uh, packaging. And you'll notice there's a boss down here. This is meant to be a vice mounted tool. So that's why we're over here at the bench in the vise. Simply set it down in there, clamp it into the vise, and the tool's ready to go. Make sure it's secure, obviously. Next, we'll take the handle, insert it into the tool, and get that ready. We don't need to use that yet. We're just getting started. Next step, kind of important. We need to figure out what size die we need. We have a choice of four different dies here in the kit. I got me some, I believe, 3 16 line here that we're gonna work with. I guess one of the first things I can go over is how to figure out what size line you have. Okay, I've thought about this a little bit and I've come up with two solutions. Well, I actually asked Eastwood and their solution was is to get a micrometer, put it on the uh, actual line itself and measure it. Uh, that will tell you how big it is. But I came up with a solution that might be a little simpler and easier for you. Drill bits. Uh, I'm assuming just about all of us have drill bits. And if you have drill bits of the same size uh, that you have dies or that you have choices of, we have four different choices here and I've set aside four different drill bits. And in this case, I have a 3 16th drill bit and you can sort of lay it up against here. You really only have four different choices and they're, they're different sizes. Uh, at least for this kit, you only have these four different choices. But I you can just take the drill bit and sort of feel if it's the same size of the, as the line. If this was uh, going up inside the, to a quarter inch, you can see there's a big difference between the sizes with the quarter inch. So that should help you uh, figure out what size line you're actually working with. So now we know we are working with a 3 16 line. Now I'm not gonna do this, this whole thing here. I'm actually just gonna cut off a piece of it. And now that I'm trying to bend this straight, this brings me to uh, another tool that might be of interest to you. This is also from Eastwood. And what these are, is these are, is are a set of pliers that are specifically designed to help you shape lines. Uh, and simply, 
you just find the appropriate size, which this one's all the way down in here on the end, and you can use it to bend the line in the shape that you need. So if you need to, if you need to make a curve, actually, you can go this way if you want to make curves, it will help you do that without kinking the line, which is the danger you run into when doing this type of work. So these guys here, pretty gosh darn handy to have and will help you uh, bend the line into the, to the shape you like. I'll put a link in the description to these as well. Next, uh, we're going to need to cut the line and here I have just a regular tubing cutter and I suggest you use a tubing cutter to do this and not like a cutoff wheel or something of that nature. Uh, that won't necessarily do as good a job as this. These, these make nice straight cuts. This is what this is designed to do. So once you found where you want to cut, simply uh, turn the wheel until the cutting wheel is making contact with the line. And you do this in increments. You start out a little bit where you sort of score the inside of it. There's, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a, a cutting wheel on the inside of this and then a little area for it to sit into. I can show you a close up of that when we're done. But go around a couple of times, give it a turn, go around another couple of times, give it another turn. Yeah, many of you have asked me about flaring brake lines. So in a way, you can use this tool review video as a, as a way to learn how to flare brake lines. Or this can also be used for fuel lines. Um, but there are three main types of flares uh, that, that this will cover. This will cover a, just a single flare, a bubble flare, and a double flare. So this tool is capable of doing three different types of flares in those four different size ranges I mentioned earlier. There we go. You can see that little cutting wheel down in there. That's how that guy works. Now, one of the things that they'd said in the instructions on how to use the tool was that you want to chamfer the edge of the line and deburr it. Uh, so if I were doing this end as opposed to this end, which, which we can do, we need to go in here and put a slight chamfer on the end of this line before we actually use the tool. Uh, so I'm going to do that now. I'm going to take it actually right over here to the uh, grinding wheel. I'm going to deburr it and then I'm just going to put a very slight chamfer on the end of it to try to match this. See how that has a nice edge on it? And that's what they're speaking of. They're speaking of that edge um, as opposed to what I just cut, which you can see is doesn't have that chamfered end on it. It will make the tool work easier if it does have that chamfered end on it. So I'll just do a quick demonstration on how I'm, I would do it and then we'll move on. Okay, from here on in kids, safety glasses. That's what I was able to do uh, with the grinder. I may have gone a bit too far. This was the other end that was quote unquote professionally cut. It only has a slight chamfer on it. Uh, with my tools, with what I was doing, it took a little more. But the important thing is you don't want any burrs or anything in here. Next step, we want to get our line and our die into the tool and prepared to do our flare. And to do that, there's a little knob here that we pull back and this swings outward. This is where the die will live. Now, given that we have a 3 16 line, you can see on there that we have the 3 16 die. We also want to make sure that we have that end that has the bevel on it, the other end, as you can see, does not have the beveled end on it. So we're going to make a double flare, so we're going to use this side right here. And we want to make sure that that side is, is facing the tool. So we will put our chamfered side in. It just sort of fits up against the back of the block here. 
going to take uh, my line. This is this is the end that uh, came out of the box there. Now, right now, I'm not going to be so concerned about where this sits in the die, and I'll show you why here in a minute. Right now, I just want to make sure that this sits in the die, and it can stick out a little bit at this point. But ultimately, we want to make sure that that line is completely flush against the die. But we're going we're gonna to work that out in a minute here. So I'll swing this back over, push the pin in, and I'm just going to lightly clamp down on the die itself. Now what I'll do is you'll see on this uh, die here that there's a flat, this OP0. Um, we're going to use that to basically push this down into place. But it's, what's nice is, once this is on here, we can just rotate it around to the different uh, settings to get the flare we want. For now, we'll start with OP0 so that we can get this flush with the die. Remember the handle? I'm going to insert this into the tool. And I'm just going to move it until it makes contact with the die and align. Make sure everything stays flush. Once the tool stops, I'm going to lock it down. Now at this point, I'm absolutely certain that the die is centered in the tool. I'm also certain that the brake line itself uh, is also completely flush with the front here. It gives you a better look at what's happening here. You can see that's flush. There's the tool. And we are ready to uh, create our flare. Now, we are going to, we have the 3 16 you can see there's an OP2 and an OP1. There's the 3 16 OP1 uh, that we're going to do. But if you have the different sizes, they're all marked here. Start with OP, which I'm going to assume is Operation 1. And then there's an Operation 2. And as you can see, some of them are doubled up. Um, and also, once again, this is the 45 degree uh, die, but they also have a 37 degree die if you're interested in doing 37 degree flares or if you have need to do 37 degree flares. One last thing before I begin the operation. The instructions also stated that a small, well, I'm actually going to have to remove the die here for a minute. Thankfully, that's so easy to do. It just pops on and off. Uh, one other thing that the uh, instructions said is to put a small amount of anti-seize on the end of the line. Uh, I'm assuming this is to help lubricate the tool and everything that's going on. Uh, only a little bit. My anti-seize is rather old, unfortunately. Maybe you can also use cutting oil or whatever, but the instructions specifically stated anti-seize, so I'm going to use exactly that. Alright, now we have our 3 16th lined up with the uh, Brake line, we're all secure, we're all set to go, so all we have to do now is uh, use the tool. Before I get committed, there's probably something I should have mentioned. Now, I'm just doing this for practice purposes, uh, but if you're doing this for real, what you'll want to do is have your threaded end already placed on the tool. As you can see, I can just come back in here and do it like this. The threads face the flare because that's what you're going to be screwing into. So if you've got flares on both ends, ends of this, uh, you're going to want to make sure that you have these on before you commit to uh, doing what I'm doing. If not, you're going to have to cut it and reflare it and start all over again. But they come in various sizes. You want to make sure that you have the correct size for your application. So anyway, I've got my bar again. We're secure, everything's down, we're flush, a little bit of anti-seize, insert this in here, and basically just uh, crank on it until the uh, tool bottoms out. And seriously, I'm done. All right, now what you see down in there is a bubble flare. So if you stop now, you would have a bubble flare. But we want a double flare. So we're going to switch the tool over to OP2, crank the handle down again, and then uh, see what we have. 
Yeah, if I were to stop there, I would have a bubble flare. If I were to take this out, I would actually kind of screw it up because I, would not, I wouldn't be able to get it back into the same location. So that's, that's why I can't do that. So this Operation 2 will give us our double flare. I just want to make sure I'm completely locked down there. But you can see on this that this is the 5 16 and 3 8 No, we don't want that one. <laughs> we want the Op 2 for the 3 16 Here it is. 3 16 quarter inch or 4.75 millimeter. I should have mentioned that this also does 4.75 millimeter uh, lines as well. So we switch to op 2, dial it in, point it up, get our handle, and go until it bottoms out. I'm done. Now if you've ever done this operation using that other tool I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you're looking at this video going, I really wish I would have had that then. I wish I knew then what I knew now. Sometimes you might need to smack this with a hammer, but look at that. That right there is a thing of beauty. It's not off center. It's all just, it's a beautiful flare. And that's what this tool does. It does beautiful flares. So if you were using this, there you go. There's the line. So if this was your brake line, this is what you do so you can make your brake lines. So if you still have one of these older type of tools and you end up getting this Eastwood thing, well, I'll tell you what, perhaps you can give this away to somebody you don't like. In all seriousness, I, I love this tool. Uh, I'm very happy to have it. I'm very happy to show you uh, how it works. It, it does what it says it does. It does it well. It does it consistently. Uh, I mean, really, what more can you ask for from something like this? I should have mentioned earlier, which I forgot, that this also does 4.75 millimeter lines in addition to the 3 16 quarter inch, 5 16 and 3, and three eighths uh, inch lines. So you got fuel lines, you got brake lines, it's mostly what you're going to run into with this. This will go a long way towards giving you good flares that don't leak. In addition to this uh, 45 degree uh, flare set, there's also the die for 37 degrees if you want that. I will put a link into the description to this tool, that die, and everything else of relevancy in this particular video. Uh, it'll all be down there in the description, so please uh, check that out. That, that about wraps it up for this. I am Eric the Car Guy. You can always find me at ericthecarguy.com, where if you have automotive questions, I would ask that you go there and uh, check out the welcome video. It'll tell you about all the wonderful features we have at ericthecarguy.com to help you with those automotive issues should you have them. In addition to that, if you wish to connect with me socially, I can be found on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter, and I close each of my videos with be safe, have fun, and of course, stay dirty. And don't forget to play with your tools, kids. I'll see you next time.